This is the kind of hard hitting journalism I expect. These are the stories that matter. Ali Abad takes daughter Raha Kapoor with her for an evening ride. Watch. Ugh. I was not able to live today unless I got to see that. Thank God there's people out there paying attention to the car drives of stars and their children. What would we be doing without them? My goodness. Where can I sign up for that career? Because that's what matters. Are you done talking? No. Nope. Okay. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid acts of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Juicy Content. Content. Thank you to Reach Sports on Patreon for those who begins to go like that. It's an actual story. Shut up. And today we got It's a... because you, you actually watch those things. Yeah. Read this. Huh? Kasupanam. Woo. Cottage cheese. Do different people hear this Indian film song differently? Oh, is this one of those, uh, what are they called? When you remember something and it's not the way you remember it, they call it a... No, this is actually a uh, film comparison going over a certain song that is... Kase Banna! That song? Yeah, that song means nothing to you. You never quote that song. Nope, I ever. love that song. Now, she's actually going over uh, the musicality of it in do different... Uh, it kind of goes... I don't know. She explains it better than I do. Okay. Go. Ready? <laughs> but what are those things? You know what I'm referring to. Uh, 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 and him and him. Has a 20 -year no. A homonym. No, when you remember homonym. something and it's not this the way you remembered it. asked you, what do you see? Dog. You might say, I see a dog. Yeah. But can you see the dog's master, the man? Yeah, he's Any parent. luck? Yeah. Can I reveal him? Yeah. There he I is. Saw. Uh -huh. The song that I'm about to show you is somewhat tricky like this dog drawing. Do people from different parts of the world hear this song differently? Yeah, I hear this. Just how strange is this song? <laughs> That's what we'll see in this episode. Welcome to the Suez Sons channel. I am Sukrish. Hi, Sukrish. In general, Indian audiences seem to have a huge appetite for that fresh sound. They want to hear songs that sound new, like nothing they've heard before. And most Indian film composers are masters at innovation. And the composer of this song, Santosh Narayanan, man oh man, he really delivered that fresh sound in this song. This is one of those genre-defying song. songs. The first time I heard this song, I mentally classified this as electronic dance music, the kind of music that you hear in dance clubs. And a little while later, I felt that it was a Tamil folk genre song, like Kuttu. Oh, it's God. a blend. And slowly I started to suspect that there is something unique and strange about this song and different musicians might classify this song into different genres. And so I spoke to different musicians about this song. Some musicians felt that this song was a 4x4 time signature. For those that's who are not thought. familiar with music theory, that simply means that they felt the rhythm of it the could also song be six, eight. like this. Boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It can also be six, eight. I may have mentioned that during this song. And most of these musicians were Western musicians and one Indian musician and they classified this song as electronic dance music. Some other musicians felt that the song can be called as a six by eight wow, time Rick, you just said music that. in addition to being There's a some two moments by that could be a two-four. Yes. Shut up, I swear In plain to God. English, that means 
that they felt the rhythm of the song like a march like this one two three four five six 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 on top of hearing boom 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 and all of these musicians were Indians and they classified the nope. song as this electronic guy. kuttu or modern Ghana or electronic Ghana. What's going on here? Why are these two groups of musicians hearing and classifying this song Why, in Rick? different ways? The second group of musicians paid more attention to one portion of the song that the first group didn't consider That's a good as comparison, important. and that is uh, absolutely if, correct. Shut up. The second group said, this is a drawing of a dog. Do you hate that I know music? Yes. Well, the first group said, <laughs> this is a drawing <laughs> of a dog. What special portion of the song did the second group focus on? It's this portion of the song. To classify the song, the Western musicians focused on the boom, 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 which are steady kick drum beats, while the Indian musicians considered both the kick drums and this. The composer has done something crazy here. It's almost like bending the genres. Instead of inviting actual South Indian folk drummers with real drums, like in usual Indian film songs, he invited singer Anthony Darson to speak out the beats with his mouth. Now, such sounds, they are called scat sounds. Um, and they have no meaning. They are simply used to give a rhythmic feeling. Now, it's quite common in Indian music to use scat sounds like dung ku cha kun or like ra ki ta ta ki ta but these sounds are always said on top of indian drums but in kasu panam tuttu mani the song we are discussing we have a strange situation with indian scat sounds on top of western sounding drum beats now you have this feeling that this is an in-between genre, in-between electronic dance music and South Indian folk music. Or maybe you can say it's both. Why did some musicians notice the scat Because of the music theory others? they were exposed to in their musical exactly. education. In the case of optical illusion drawings, researchers have found that our own culture and exposure determines how we see the drawing. Maybe it was similar in the case of this music. Four count beats, also known as four by four You think if you heard it at the beginning of the channel, you would have heard in Western popular than music. Than no, I still, I, I, st I didn't pick up on the fact that it's Tamil folk, but I absolutely will pick up on the fact that it's 6-8. I picked up on Tamil folk. If you've been listening to a lot of four count beats, you're likely to interpret do you the listen to song a lot of four count beats? as a four count beat. Most people song. do. Uh, now, that's what yeah. might have happened to the Western four, four, musicians. Four, four, three, four, six, eight as are the most the common, unless you listen to Sting. In Indian culture, we have a lot of six count and rhythms, the Beatles. <laughs> also known as six by eight time signature songs. It's common in folk genres like Kuttu or Rush. and Ghana. But I'd like to know if those Western musicians she spoke to actually have music, like studied music or they're self-taught. So it's ingrained in Indians. That's probably how the Indian musicians ended up finding the six count rhythm in the scat. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ding. Ku cha kun is only four sounds. How can you call it a six count rhythm? The That's spaces a in between. Dollar wow. question. <laughs> Just kidding. Glad you asked. It's actually you, simple. Man. Notice how dun ku cha kun dun is placed kun. on a six count rhythm in slow motion. Dun ku cha kun. Ku cha kun. Wow. Ku cha kun. Trickery. Kun. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 
As you could see, some scat sounds are two counts long and also some counts were left silent. And so it's the underlying six count structure that's important here. And that is the part that the Indian musicians Technically, all four fours can feel six eight. It depends rhythm. on the arrangement. The strangeness I agree, Rick. or uniqueness I agree. of the song doesn't end there. There is a recurring I feel like I'm in school siren right now. sound. I hate it. <laughs> Notice how the siren doesn't sync with anything else in the song. It is completely off rhythm. Why? Because it symbolizes the police siren. This whole movie is a crime comedy and this song is a crook's daydream with ransom money. The police is not supposed to be in sync with criminals' thoughts. So I think it was a oh, brilliant a decision to have the sirens without sync. It is a constant audio symbolism for illegal money. And the last crazy thing in the song is the video game sounds. <laughs> Such sounds called 8-bit music or chiptune music were popular in 80s video games. Such sounds you have some don't of those games? fit at That all one just there Asian where you shoot the bird Indian out of the sky? Kingdom you thing. bet. But if you notice, even in the visuals, you will find anachronisms, objects that don't belong you made in up that, that word. time period. No, that's For a real, instance, that's a real word. Don't make up words, Rick. The cell phone, the bubbles, the popcorn, and my favorite, the dancer's shoes. shoes. Just absolutely ridiculous. This is a crook's greedy daydream. So he imagines himself as a king, but at the same time, he wants the modern conveniences. That's why we have all these anachronisms and it's comedic genius by the whole team. And the 80s video game sound effects are like the composer's reply to the funny visuals. It's the audio anachronism. People from around the world have watched this song. Hey! International audiences might call the main vocals as rap, <laughs> but talent-speaking audiences <laughs> Me from too. India may identify the singing style as Ghana, which includes rhythmic singing without melody. So there you have it. It's your rap Ghana chiptune EDM <laughs> Kuttu song. The nice. basics of how Indian film songs are different from Western pop songs are highlighted in this video. Did you understand all that? Yeah. Okay, good. That was great. Uh, there was something about numbers in there. <laughs> uh. Can't exactly tell you what it was, but there's something about they, she was bad at counting. She was like four or six. And, uh, and I was like, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's, it's not just what you listen to and what you, if you studied music, but it's also, you know, with both of my parents being musicians, especially my dad being a songwriter. I Your mom plays he, the skin flute, sorry. He, he, <laughs> he introduced me to m some music theory things. And then I, when I studied music, it was, became very evident. You don't have to take a lot of music to understand basic music theory. But it was an important thing that my kids will tell you how often I didn't just wanted them to hear a lot of songs, but I would point out to them. And we still do when we listen to songs, we're impressed with changes of meter. Uh, Sting is a freaking, it's his jazz experience because jazz screws around with meter a lot of the time. But that was a very informative. And yes, that is an anachronisms as an actual uh, word. It's it's amazing how you just disconnect when it's of no interest to you. Uh, you know, when you say music theory, um, anybody who says that, not you in particular, yeah. you sound like a douche. Uh, uh, and I hate it. Um, yeah. Do you just sit around and be like, mm, what theory is this song? Am I right? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, the idiots! People knowing things you don't really infuriate. It infuriates you. me. Yeah. Uh, and you guys should really stop it. Yeah. Um, I Sorry about the same that. thing as uh, people that. I'll write. Up. I'll write a song about that for you. About uh, for you in rhythms gonna, that you can't is it comprehend. Be in seven sixteen. No, I'm going to mess the meter up consistently, and I'm going to change the time signature and the keys, and I'm going to modulate, and I'm going to talk about it. Your the mom messed are up be, my meter and modulated I'm include it. <laughs> anachronism in the lyrical content of the song. Also, when people bring up film theory, I'm like, shut up, idiot! You just don't uh, like theory in general, huh? Uh, yeah. You prefer hypothetical. Yeah. Yeah. Only hypothetical. Yeah. Uh, the more abstract, the better, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. 
Um, did you garner anything from that at all, or did you just she relegate can't it? Count. She kept saying four, did you just, six, four, rather six. than be teachable. You just relegated she it to just a waste of time. Skips five yeah. for some reason. Can you have a five three? Is that a theory? Well, not really. Well, maybe if you try it hard enough. Yeah, no. Uh, you should try harder, and then maybe you could get five three like me. No, I got absolutely nothing from that video outside of I no. was in it and it was nice to see myself. No, because uh, four like four four what's means the, what's the biggest difference musically from India to Western? The biggest <sighs> what would say the biggest difference is outside of instruments, of course. I think the biggest difference is going to be the modes that they use. So Western music, which includes pop music here, has very specific modes that we use that are um really built on a lot of the 88 keys of the piano and that you move in between those keys by half steps. Indian music does not do that. Indian music plays in between the half steps. So like if you're looking at a piano and you know the black and white keys and it's pretty obvious that those are the only notes that you can play. There's notes in between those notes because for example, if you look at the white key C and then right above it is the black key, that's the C sharp. So you're going up to that note. It looks to the Western person as that that's it. There's nothing in between there. But in the harmonic series and in music, there is space. That's why if you were playing a C on a guitar or a violin, you can bend that note and it'll slide from the C to the C sharp. There's a note in between the C and the C sharp. It's why when you're trying to tune a guitar, it doesn't sound right until it locks in, even though it's really, really close. And that's, the to me, one of the biggest differences is that Indian music incorporates those in-betweens. Mm -hmm. and, and Western just does not. That's why the Beatles liked them. It was, so different. It, was it was literally mind-blowing for them to see a completely new world of opportunity in what you could compose musically. Yeah, that's why they were flabbergasted by India. I wonder if she saw our video and was like, mm, I should make a video That was great. This. That made me really happy. Um... <laughs> He was like, oh, that guy on the left uh, really said some things, and the other guy was just making penis jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I do. It's what yep. I do. That's what you uh, come here for. Especially on the music parts. That's uh, right. <laughs> the film parts will say more. Music parts will say, ooh, cool. It's good sound. Uh, yep. that's, uh, you can count on me uh, to show you how to take a C chord with the fourth making it a sus, and you can count on him to talk about You can count on Rick penis. to sound like a douche. Yep. Uh, anyways... Us, great video. Let us know uh, other uh, videos from her. Uh, uh, she is one popular music of India that was great. versus American something. It's what it says here. I'd American, like to see that. Uh, I'd also like to see her. She sat there the whole time at the keyboard, but never played it. But what's going on over there? Uh, popular Indian music versus American. Six different decode. Six differences decoded. Ooh, there you go. Mm. Uh, she decoded all of it for you. She Rick. did. Uh, let's uh, watch that one next, because I know how much you'll like it. Anyways, let us know. Juice.